Thanks, Nitin, for inviting me for this conference. Uh, this is the first time I'm speaking in front of a non-finance crowd, so I'm pretty nervous and uh, very happy to see a very few people in this room. Uh, so uh, uh, today what I'm going to talk about is basically my experience in uh, running uh, uh, this uh, website and blog called Safal Niveshak. So uh, uh, if you don't understand Hindi, Safal Niveshak uh, uh, is uh, uh, what successful investor all about. So successful investor in Hindi is called Safal Niveshak. Uh, I actually wanted to start a uh, Hindi uh, website uh, five years back uh, when I was uh, planning for this uh, thing, uh, and thus book this domain, book, book, book this domain. But then realized that there's a there's not a big market for people who uh, 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 visit the web um, uh, from the Hindi heartland, and that's the reason I I, I uh, maintained this uh, domain name because I liked it, uh, uh, and it has really done well for me uh, in terms of the fact that people uh, uh, who don't understand Hindi they still uh, like what I do on Safal Nivesh, especially uh, people uh, from um, outside India. Uh, so uh, uh, the, 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 I think uh, the, the uh, message which I get is that uh, the message or the things which I'm writing on Safal Niveshak is much more important in terms of building a brand or building a community than the domain. So, uh, so thanks again. Uh, 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 I, I call uh, the readers uh, on Safal Niveshak a tribe. Uh, I actually uh, borrowed this term from Seth Gordon who uh, wrote a very wonderful book called Tribes. Uh, and uh, that was some, one of the uh, biggest inspirations for me. I used to read a lot of Seth Gordon while I was planning uh, Safal Niveshak in 2010. Uh, I was working as a stock market analyst uh, for eight years uh, in Bombay, uh, uh, being paid very well. Uh, so I'll talk about why I'm talking about being paid very well. And uh, uh, writing recommendation reports, uh, stock tips uh, for small investors. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, so I was working as a stock market analyst and researching stocks, so entirely into the finance industry, did my MBA uh, in finance and uh, got into this industry uh, by luck. Uh, the idea uh, I started, the reason I started Safal Niveshak was to actually get on ground and uh, educate people on uh, what should they be doing with their money um, uh, in the sense that I saw a lot of people losing their money uh, recklessly in the stock markets, in, in the financial markets. Both because they were not educated and secondly because they were, they were uh, dealt a wrong hand by their financial advisors. So the idea I started Safal Niveshak uh, was because I wanted to actually get on ground and educate people on, on, on learning about sensible investing. The reason I call it a tribe, tribe is because tribe is basically people who are connected to each other. They're connected to a leader and connected to an idea. So there's nothing like a leader on Safal Niveshak. Of course, I, I call myself the chief tribe member. But then uh, 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 there, there are like 20,000 people uh, who are now connected to an idea which is called value investing. Value investing in simple terms is, is identifying good quality businesses and buying them cheap. So if, if you can find something which is high quality stuff and you, and you can assess whether that stuff is worth 100 rupees, then you buy it for 50 rupees in the stock market. So that, that's the entire idea of value investing. People generally don't do that. People buy bad stuff and that too expensive. So the, the reason I call it a tribe is because I wanted to bring that idea uh, onto a, a platform uh, which is Safal Nivesh. I can actually connect a lot of people, uh, people uh, mainly investors who wanted to learn about investing. What is Safal Nivesh all about? It's an initiative to educate and empower small investors to make intelligent and independent investing decisions. Now if you look at the financial markets, they are like, they like at the intersection of three things, most important things that we really face. One is greed. The other is fear. The third is stupidity. And uh, uh, that's where Safal Niveshik comes into picture. As I've realized, uh, uh, based on my experience and based on seeing other businesses, I think the success of a business really lies uh, in the proportion of how well you understand the problem. And I think uh, if you can identify with a problem that you yourself are facing, you'll do well as far as your business is concerned. So being stupid, I think, has been a, uh, uh, one of the fundamental reasons. I being stupid in my investment decisions in the past, and seeing a lot of stupidity happening all around me, I think that was a fundamental reason I thought that there was a big market for people or there's a big market to actually teach people on how to really avoid. These are fundamental emotions that we all go through, I think, since prehistoric times. So in, in no way uh, I can really aim to change all that thing, but my idea through Safal Nivesh is actually help people minimize the mistakes that they make uh, out of these uh, emotions of greed, fear, and stupidity. And that's the reason, uh, in hindsight, I think this idea has worked for me. How Safal Niveshak runs, so uh, we are 100% bootstrap, all web work, which is website, technology. We do very basic technology, not really high tech stuff. Writing, emailing, social media, housekeeping, everything is handled in-house. So we've, we, I, I personally don't really spending, uh, don't like spending money 
uh, on stuff which I can learn to do on my own, and that's the reason it's 100% bootstrap. We're just a two-member team, no offices. We work out of your homes. I started this uh, five years back, and Anshul, my partner, he's sitting here. He works out of Bangalore from his home. He joined me last year, so uh, again, uh, low cost. A complete focus is on teaching people to become better investors. So there have been opportunities for us where people wanted us to start stock recommendation and stock tipping, and they wanted to uh, um, wanted us to manage their money. But I think uh, this is something that we have really clearly focused on. We don't want to get anywhere outside education, and there's a big market for that uh, in terms of teaching people how to become better investors. The principles on which Safal Nivesh stands is unbiased, independent, and brutally honest. I think these are the key principles which is missing from the financial services industry. People are biased, people are not independent, people are not honest, and I think uh, that really sets us apart. Uh, our analytical skills or the skills in identifying businesses or skill in writing about value investing is not, I think, not something which really uh, keeps us apart. I think it's the idea of being honest to uh, your reader, to your customer, uh, being independent in what you're writing, because when it comes to money, it's, uh, people easily get fooled. So I think uh, being honest is something which is very important. It's not been easy, Mark Tain said. It's, it's easier to fool people than to convince them that they have been fooled. So for us, it's not been easy. It's very easy to deceive people, but it's very difficult to educate them. And we have realized that uh, over the past five years that when you talk about education, when you talk about sensible long-term investing, and that you need to learn uh, how to become sensible as far as investments are concerned, people won't come. Or very few people will come. But when there's a CNBC, sorry for calling names, but when there's CNBC which organizes an investor camp, and all they talk about is stock trading and how to buy and sell stocks, technical charts, and all those kind of jargons, which really uh, uh, lead people to lose money. I think there are a lot more people who will attend such, such, such seminar, seminars, such workshops, such courses. So it's not been easy for us, but I think, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the idea, the complete focus is on doing what we think is a big problem in terms of uh, 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 minimizing the stupidities that people make. And I think that's the path we're, that we have, we have consciously chosen for ourselves as far as Safar Nifu is concerned. Uh, just uh, a short stuff on what we did exactly do before I come to the learnings uh, uh, as far as uh, what we have learned uh, from Safal Nivesh and from our journey of being an entrepreneur uh, over the past five years. Uh, some offline stuff, so apart from the website that we have, uh, uh, we, we do workshops and this is a photograph of the first ever workshop I did in Bangalore in 2012. I started with the model where people were not invite, asked to pay a fixed price, so I said, come and attend my workshop, learn about value investing, and pay me anything between zero and 5,000 after the workshop is over. And uh, uh, trust me, it was a very difficult decision because I had quit my job, there was no revenue stream, and doing it for two years uh, on go was very difficult. But the entire idea, as I mentioned, was built on trust. That people trust me and they would come, and I trust them, I trust people, and they would come and they like it and probably they'll pay me. And the idea really worked because uh, over these two years when I did not have any fixed price for my workshops, People paid me enough to meet my cost and earn a small profit, so that was a great thing. But then things happened, I, uh, I think uh, there was an inflection point sometime uh, in 2012, uh, after one year from starting Safal Nivesh, where people started reading, more and more people com were coming on the platform. And this has happened over a number of years, if you see the kind of audience, the kind of, and, and mind you, these are not people who paid zero to 2,000, these are pe people who actually paid a fixed fee, a high fixed fee for attending the workshop. So this is one realization that when you charge people, they find value. When you offer something for free, I think, and then, when, and then when you start charging people, I think it's a very difficult uh, uh, work to do over a period of time. But when you charge people money for the stuff that you're providing, people find value. And as I've realized, more people come when you tell them that this is the price that you have to pay and this is the value, this is the kind of value that you receive. So uh, past five years, 50 plus workshops, 1300 plus participants across 10, 10 12 different cities, uh, uh, something that we never really expected. Uh, coming to the online work, uh, the website is uh, where we uh, do most of our stuff, 80-90% of our stuff happens on the website. So we have a free newsletter which I started in 2011. Uh, it's called the Safal Niveshak Post which is written thrice a week. Uh, uh, and we've already written 700 plus articles. These are all free stuff. So this is free, free, free everywhere. 80-90% of Safal Niveshak is free. And we've done interviews with people. So uh, the idea is to, uh, to, to build a tribe based on content, I think, uh, uh, to teach people uh, not asking them for money for the free stuff that you're writing and to do most of the stuff free so that people come, they like, they keep, they start trusting you and then of course uh, based on that trust you can definitely uh, provide them some premium stuff. Again, people would buy that only when they trust you. So uh, this is the journey that has happened uh, for the free uh, newsletter. Started with 10 people including one which was me, myself. 
and uh, now we had like 20,000 uh, readers of Safal Niveshek post. Uh, the most important thing I think uh, is not the growth, the most important thing is that it has come 100% by word of mouth. We've never advertised, I've never advertised for Safal Niveshek. We've no, never bought Google ads, we've never uh, uh, really sold brochures or, or shared brochures or at different events. The only thing that we've done is to consistently do what we are doing, that is educating people honestly. And we have like 20,000 subscribers from, if I were to just uh, uh, talk about a number, they're like 130 different countries. Of course, most of those readers come from India, US, uh, uh, the Middle East, uh, UAE. But then uh, uh, Safal Niveshak, despite being a Hindi term, uh, the, there are readers from across the world and uh, that's, that's something that really encourages us. So that's a growth of, if I were to calculate the growth from 10 people to 20,000, it's a growth of around 3.2% 3 per week. Um, so I'm not sure how many of you have uh, heard of this uh, eighth wonder of the world which is called power of compounding. Power of compounding simply means that small changes which largely go unnoticed but over a long period of time can create really big kind of stuff. So if I were to ask you a question, uh, how do you reach the moon for free? Is there a way to reach the moon for free? You have to fold a piece of paper 45 times. If you can fold a piece of paper, paper 45 times, the distance would be from earth to moon. Just 45 times. Of course, you cannot fold a piece of paper 45 times. Another question, if I were to put one grain of rice on the first block of the chessboard and double it for the every block, how many grains of rice would I have on the 64th block? Of course, uh, I'm sure people will guess and people will say some million or billion or trillion something. The number of grains of rice on the 64th block will be a heap bigger than Mount Everest. Will be equal to more than what the total rice product production in the world is it today. That's a power of compounding. Of course, your money doubles, does not double every, every month or every week and the number of subscribers also don't double. But I was just calculating, this is the growth of 3.2% per week Right? And that is why growth is so important for startups of small businesses. If I were to grow and extend this growth for the next five years at only 1%, at only 1%, but for the next five years and consistently do what I'm doing, we'll reach around 260,000 subscribers. Again, entirely word of mouth. I'm saying doing what I'm doing currently, not doing any advertising, nothing. That will really take us into a much higher orbit. But I think doing something gradually, consistently, honestly, for a long period of time, I think that is the most important idea that really this chart really talks about as far as uh, number of subscribers of growth for a business is concerned. Another online stuff which I started in 2013, now this is a premium stuff, so this is a value investing course, uh, which is a completely online value investing course. You get online courses and videos and everything. It has uh, around 1300 plus subscribers, uh, again uh, uh, from 15 different countries and these are not just Indians, they are like uh, uh, citizens and uh, guys from uh, different countries who are actually subscribing to this thing. So. It's universal, the, 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 the service which I'm doing, the product which I'm selling is universal. I think that's one, one another important idea to really uh, uh, start a business that you want to scale it up beyond, beyond uh, the geographies. The idea was not to do that, but then idea was to do uh, what we knew best and the problems that people are facing. And you realize that the problems that people face across the world are same. So uh, this has really helped us. Another premium thing that we launched uh, just last year was a newsletter called the Value Investing Almanac. And we actually bought, bought a special software to protect the privacy of this newsletter in the sense that it's called Lock Lizard, uh, which is used by many uh, big organizations uh, globally where someone needs to download a free software and I, I, I would give them a license to open that PDF kind of a file and you cannot really share it uh, if you're not a subscriber. So we have 400 plus subscribers including a lot of uh, leading value investors across the world who subscribe to this thing. Again, no advertising. One lesson. Uh, Blogging for business or uh, I think uh, writing uh, content marketing, one big lesson that what we have learned is this is something that most people would do. When you go to a website, they would sell you something, right? Or just because they have your email ID, they'll, 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 they'll send you a lot of spam emails, buy my stuff, buy this stuff, this is the last day, this is the best offer, 50% discount, all this kind of stuff. I think this is not what works. We've not tried it, but we've seen it. People failing and uh, you yourself uh, must experience that when you receive uh, an email with an offer from someone unknown, I think you don't trust that person. You'd rather put it, that email in a spam. So this is not uh, what really works. What has really worked for us is you need to convert that stranger into a friend gradually. Again, I'm not talking about say, because your ultimate goal is not to turn him into a customer. It is, of course, but then you are thinking of that you genuinely want to help that person. Turn that stranger into a friend and then try to turn that friend into a customer. 
of the 100 people who start as strangers on your website, there'll be only two or three who ultimately turn out to be customers, but these would be lifelong customers because they have traveled a distance, they have become your friend, they have started trusting you, and then they have actually become your customers. And that, this really works well. It has worked well for me, and I, I'm sure uh, uh, this is what I've learned from uh, most successful businesses, online and offline, that this, this journey has to be there. You cannot really expect to turn things around in a quick, quick span of time. Uh, how we do it all, uh, again, uh, I've talked about being trustworthy, you, tell, you have to tell a story, you really can't be boring, uh, especially online, uh, whether you're a blog, whether you're a website, your website must tell a story, I think. Uh, you need to talk to the customer or a stranger like a friend. You cannot really, uh, of course, you guys are, most of you guys are technology guys and uh, so, so will be your website, but uh, uh, you need to tell a story. Uh, the, the, the stranger needs to connect with what he's reading um, on your website, I think. Uh, uh, this is this is I think what is called as user experience. So people design websites based on technology, but I think uh, we need to design websites based on what the user wants to experience, right? So that's user experience. I think is one of the most important ideas for me personally, as far as looking at Safal Nivesha going forward is concerned. Don't need to sell. Again, uh, you need to educate people to buy, and I think that that's a way you can convert them into lifelong uh, uh, buyers of your service. You have to be honest. Uh, you have to lay down your incentives clear and you have to be reliable. I think uh, whether you're selling a software product, whether you're selling a service, whether you're selling anything, you have to be reliable. You have to communicate with your people regularly. I think that's one of the most important thing. And uh, one final thing about Safal Niveshak, this is the return on investment of doing it well. So I'm not really putting actual numbers for the sake of not inviting competition. But uh, uh, the return of a return on investment doing it well, if I were to say 100 rupees was my salary because I'm a sole, I was a sole entrepreneur, now I'm sure it works along with me. But just to give a number, if I was earning 100 rupees, and mind you, as I mentioned, stock market analysts get paid a lot of money, undeserving kind of a money for the kind of work that they're doing. So if I were paying, if I were earning 100 rupees at the start of Safal Niveshak when I was, when I was, when I was quitting my job, my earning during the first year was 40 rupees, so it was tough. As I mentioned, all businesses, all startups actually are, do face tough times in the first uh, few years or first few months of their life. But things actually started because, as I mentioned, doing consistently what, what you like doing and what you think is a big problem because you yourself are facing that problem. I think it really works, works out well over a long period of time. The idea is, again, to give a long period of time. I'm not sure what the kind of future that Safal Niveshak will have, but as we see it, as of now, both in terms of the kind of work that we do, that we really love doing, and the kind of uh, incentives, the investment, the return that we get on our investment of time, effort, uh, and of course, uh, spending on the website and everything, it has really worked wonders for us, uh, which really keeps us moving. No advertising cost, entirely based on trust and referral. No advertising cost, we've not really spent many money on advertising. In fact, uh, uh, when I was starting this website and for the first one year, the entire, the only money that I paid, or the first two years, the only money which I paid was on buying the domain name in the first year and uh, hosting the website. Even uh, the emailers from MailChimp were free for the first two years because we did not have so many subscribers. Of course, we pay MailChimp uh, for emailing as well, but then if you can compare to the kind of return that we are getting uh, from uh, the efforts that we are doing, I think uh, it's a highly scalable business and especially being online because when you, write, uh, when you write a newsletter, which is the premium newsletter, or when you offer a course, right, you can sell the same course to 100 people, you can sell the same course without any incremental effort to 5,000 people, right? So uh, I'm sure no one from this room will actually get into this business and destroy our returns, but I think that's a way for any business that your business has to be scalable uh, without much incremental effort. I think that's a way, otherwise you're working on a job. Even if you're starting up or you're running a business, you're working on a job. Uh, so the idea is to actually love doing what you're doing. This is what we are doing in Safal Niveshak, and uh, uh, reasonably well, doing it reasonably well. Some recognition we've received, so there's a leading blog in the US which actually uh, wrote about us in terms of the top 10 slam dunk, that's a term that they use, investing blogs to make you an investing all-star. The only website from India was Safal Niveshak, and this happened actually, actually three years back, two years back, so uh, we were just into the third year, so. Uh, uh, unexpected uh, good surprise for us. And uh, then something really big happened. Uh, how many of you know Warren Buffett? Oh, everyone knows. How many of you know Charlie Munger? So Charlie Munger is the business partner of Warren Buffett and he's actually the right hand or left hand uh, man of Warren Buffett. He's one of the richest guys, again, the, one of the best minds uh, in investing that you can really find uh, in the world. And uh, if you've not really read this book, uh, even if you are not into finance or investing, I'm sure 
I would uh, uh, say with 100% guarantee that you love this book on Charlie Munger, which is called The Poor Charlie's Almanac, which, was, which is actually a compilation of his uh, uh, teachings, his lectures, his speeches, whatever learnings someone can really get from Charlie Munger. Um, it's, 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 it's in a book called The Poor Charlie's Almanac, and uh, late last year I got this book as a surprise from Charlie Munger with his autograph and my name handwritten by Charlie Munger. And this again came as an unexpected surprise for me. So I think uh, this is, uh, th these are the benefits or these are the uh, advantages uh, that you, uh, or these are things actually that which keep you moving on apart from the money that you get, I think more than the money that you get. So uh, motivation, a big motivation uh, in terms of getting a book autographed by Charlie Munger without knowing what, what is happening. So uh, that's all uh, about Safal Nivesh. Now I'll just uh, spend some time on the lessons, that big lessons that we've learned. Rather, I, I won't uh, like to be a preachy here, but some of the lessons that we are actually learned uh, in our journey of Safal Niveshak and I, I think which really can benefit a lot of people who are starting out or who are who are facing some issues in their business. The first lesson that uh, we've, we've learned is uh, that you need to think really long term and I think this is what Jeff Bezos uh, said, uh, that if everyone, if everything you do needs to be done, work, uh, you, you work on a three year horizon, then you're actually competing against a lot of people. So uh, well, I think, uh, uh, but, uh, but the fact is that if you, if you work from a seven to 10 year horizon, then you are competing against a fraction of those people because very few companies are willing to do that. So if you're thinking from a seven to 10 year horizon, and I'm not talking about seven to 10 year planning, you really can't plan so long. Of course you should not, in, in fact you should not really plan so long when you are when you're working on a startup or you are trying to grow. Uh, you need to work on short term plans, but your, your eyes should be set I think uh, on the uh, long term horizon. This is what, what our eyes at Safal Nivesh are set on. Just by lengthening the time horizon from two to three years of what we want to achieve in two to three years, if we are to work on something that we want to achieve in the next seven to 10 years, I think that's, that's uh, something amazing, that a big learning that we've really had from Safal Nivesh. Uh, so, uh, second thing, uh, uh, very important thing that we've learned is we need to focus on what's, what's not going to change. I would want to share a video from, uh, again, from Jeff Bezos, he says that, you can build a business strategy only on things which are not going to change, right? So uh, uh, technology is changing. Of course, you cannot really build a business strategy around technology. But that, uh, but then as uh, uh, Bezos says, and he's proved uh, with his business and his investments in Amazon over a long period of time, things that really work out as business strategy are things which are not going to change in the long run. And, 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 and I'm going to show, show a small video in terms of explaining you what I am actually talking about. So. Uh, it's not going to change in the next 10 years. And I submit to you that that second question is actually the more important of the two. Because you can build a business strategy around the things that are stable in time. And so as you pointed out, in our retail business, we know that customers want low prices. And I know that's gonna be true 10 years from now. They want fast delivery, they want vast selection. It's impossible to imagine a future 10 years from now where a customer comes up to me and says, Jeff, I love Amazon, I just wish the prices were a little higher. You know how you, I, I love Amazon, I just wish you delivered a little more slowly. Impossible. And so the effort that we put into those things, spinning those things up, we know the energy we put into it today will still be paying dividends for our customers 10 years from now. And so those, when you have something that you know is true, even over the long term, you can afford to put a lot of energy into it. Technology not working to your advantage, I think this is not going to change over a long period of time. So, so, uh, uh, so I think, uh, again, coming back to the same point, what, what's not going to change? So here are some things which we believe at Safal Niveshak is not going to change, or, or things which are going to change versus not going to change. How content is delivered in terms of videos, audios, uh, podcast, uh, blog, written stuff, and how content is consumed, again, on handset, on uh, laptops, on tablets. This is going to change. I think uh, you guys understand better that things uh, as far as delivery of uh, 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 content and as far as consumption of uh, uh, content uh, or anything that uh, consumers want to consume is going to change over the next 10 years. So we are really uh, not really, uh, we, we, have, we cannot really plan a business around uh, what's going to change. Of course, we, we are getting into uh, doing a lot more videos uh, and uh, doing a lot more podcasts, but uh, this is not something which I hand. But what is in a hand? I think three important things. People wanting to learn the right things on how to invest their money sensibly, 
people wanting to trust someone to get them well and people willing to patronize business they like, which is word of mouth, this is not going to change. These things have not really changed in the last 100 years, ever since the stock market has really been, especially the first thing. And the second thing, because people are losing trust on financial advisors and that's the reason they want to bring things back into their own hand. These are things which are not going to change and this is, I think, our focus area. We completely focus on what is not going to change and then work on that aspect of the business. The third most important thing that I have learned, uh, uh, and I think it's a great learning for all entrepreneurs, you don't need to be a man with a hammer because then everything in the world will look like a nail, right? Because if you have only one, one tool in your toolkit, everything you, that you want to solve in the world, every problem you want to solve in the world will be through the tool. Maybe it's technology, maybe it's finance. Charlie Munger says this, I constantly see people rise in life who are not the smartest, sometimes not even the most diligent, but they are learning machines. They go to bed every night a little wiser than they were when they got up and boy, does that help, particularly when you have a long run ahead of you. So as an entrepreneur, I understand that I need to know about the big ideas from diverse fields like psychology, physics, not every idea, but big ideas from business, from economics, from evolution, and use them as several tools from my toolkit, I think, when I am running my business. And there are great dangers of knowing just one thing like finance or technology, and if you just focus on only one thing, I think uh, that's going to lead you to a lot of trouble because you'll be like a man with a hammer. If you want only understand technology and you only look at your business from the technology point of view, I think uh, there are dangers lying ahead. But and if you only, for example, if I only understood finance and looked at Safal Nivesh only from that point of view, there, there are dangers lying ahead in front of me. And that's the reason I have to have that multidisciplinary bent of mind. Any kind of businessman you are, I think, any kind of, not just businessman, even if you're working on a job, having that multidisciplinary kind of a mindset and learning the big ideas from different fields and trying to connect them as you go forward, I think that's the best thing that you can do um, as far as being a better learner, a better businessman, or a better uh, employee uh, is concerned. So uh, another big lesson. The third big lesson, the fourth big lesson is uh, something uh, which we really practice as I've talked about uh, being, having a strict control on the amount of spending that we are doing because we believe that we can't rely on money to solve all our problems. And I think this is the reason most uh, 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 new businesses, most startups we, we see around us fail because they start to throw money at all the problems. And uh, the first thing that I think that's some, something unusual, not really usual, unusual, it's very normal these days. People want to start up, they want to get uh, money from, uh, angel investors, VCs, and they want to go out, aim for an IPO and just sell off the business. I think uh, uh, the probability of, uh, uh, or the size of success in startups is huge. I think can be huge. The size of success that you can achieve in startups can be huge, huge. but so is the probability of failure. I think uh, we need to look at both sides of the coin. And, and here's this a small, again, a small clip from uh, uh, Jack Ma of Alibaba, where he talks about uh, not really relying on money to solve all your problems. So again, a small clip, Anshul, please help me. Maximilian, start. That time, I was working on the website. I was always a teacher. Look at the footnotes. Why do we have no money? We don't have any money. That time, I was working on the website. I was always a teacher. I went to work on the website. I worked 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 on the website. 所以开始创业的是五万块钱，我们花任何一分钱，都有可能获死效。我的竞争对手个个比我强，所以我后来明白一个道理：很多创业者死掉不是因为没有钱，而是因为太多的钱。因为你觉得用钱去解决问题的时候，这个你的问题已经来了。我认为钱解决的问题都不是问题，钱只是去解决问题的一个重要的手段而已。啊，所以很多人说我有钱，我可以干这个。这个人基本是失败，从这一天开始就是失败的开始。所以直到今直到今天为止，阿里巴巴可能是中国互联网也是全世界互联网中这个现金储备算比较多的一家公司。我们依旧保持这样的一种风格。我们希望，我们永远懂得这个。我以前好像很多年前我讲过，钱啊，一家公司的钱就像一个国家的军队，不能轻易动。但是，一旦要动，必须得赢。这个钱不能乱花，以为有钱都解决问题。This is, I think, one lesson which I uh, uh, share with a lot of people who want to uh, uh, get into, say, stock markets full time, quit their jobs, and get into businesses of their own. And the question that they have is, when do you think is the right time to start up? So I think uh, uh, 
for me, uh, being from a finance background, it's very important to have that financial life under control. So you, you should have no liabilities of your own. You should be a minimalist. I think your, your family should be supportive. You should be uh, able to live on very uh, low uh, uh, cost. Uh, I'm not talking about compromising your uh, present for the future, but I'm talking about being able to live happily at low cost. I think these are some of the core mantras of people who want to start up uh, uh, afresh uh, without much financial backing. So uh, uh, this has really helped me uh, in terms of having zero financial liabilities and a good supportive family. And something that I uh, thought that would work because this is the problem I was facing as far as uh, uh, stupidities and in investments are concerned. So uh, the fifth lesson uh, uh, Safal Nivesha teaches me or uh, which I learned from uh, other successful businesses that you need to believe in the J curve. Now what's the J curve? J curve is the time that you spend uh, over a period of time where your business does not return much but then there's an inflection point and really shoots up. So if the probability of the objective is great, you need to work, work, work at it, right? And you may succeed in an epic way. So look at what Elon Musk has achieved. I think it's very easy to consider Elon Musk and his advance in space, uh, electric cars, solar power, and you think it's rapid, it's ridiculously rapid. But that's not the case. I think SpaceX, if you see, it was founded in 2002. Tesla was in June to July 2003. That's around 12 to 13 years back. So while we are seeing huge acceleration, and what these companies can do or what Elon Musk is doing, these have not been overnight successes, I think. It's only that they have become better with time. So what we are really seeking with Musk's businesses or our businesses are returns which are on the far side of the J-curve. So spending our effort and then expecting, not expecting effort, uh, results out of any kind of business, but you understand that the business is going to do well. It's only the interim that I need to struggle. So I think believing in the J-curve is one of the most important things that you can do if you want to really create a big, profitable, scalable business over a long period of time. Sixth important lesson is you should know where you will die and please don't go there. I think uh, this is this comes from again from a lesson which I have learned so many times from Charlie Munger. He says, all I want to know is where I'm going to die so that I will not go there. So this is a game called Russian Roulette where again, there's a, a story which uh, Nassim Taleb uh, writes about in his book called Fooled by Randomness and he says that a lot of people play Russian Roulette. What's a Russian Roulette? where you uh, fill uh, the gun with one bullet in one of the chambers and all the other chambers are empty and you're asked to put that gun on your head and fire, right? So if there are six chambers, you'll be happy five times, but you'll become a statistic in the sixth time, right? So you're dead. So if, even if someone is offering you $10 million to play that Russian roulette, the question is, would you pay, play it, right? I would not play it personally. And I, I have seen people who are playing Russian roulette actually uh, they're happy sometimes when they are making the money with the, when the, when the chamber is not uh, filled, uh, filled with uh, the bullet, but the sixth time when it really shoots, you're gone. So very important, I think, uh, as far as the business is concerned or my business or Safal Nivesh is concerned, taking my customers for granted or spending cash recklessly without idea of how we are going to generate it. I think these are all ways to get killed and we at Safal Nivesh try to avoid it. I think that's one of the learnings that any business can have that please don't do anything that is going to kill you in the future. So very important. And the seventh and one of the most important rules is, lessons is you need to believe in luck. I think a lot of good luck. Now people generally consider themselves unlucky and everyone else is lucky. But I think luck like love is a verb. And what is a verb? Verb is action. I think when you when you practice, when you do the hard work, you get lucky over a period of time. I'm again referring to the J curve. So uh, again, one lesson uh, that you need to, uh, uh, in hindsight, if I were to look at Safal Nivesha's journey, I would uh, call it a huge amount of luck that, that really came my way, that there was not many people or no one who was doing uh, what I was doing. Still, I don't find people uh, who are doing the kind of stuff that we are doing. And uh, the most important thing that we did not lose hope in the first two years when the business was not doing well and actually kept on doing what we were doing. So uh, uh, in hindsight, it was uh, big luck for us, but I think uh, you need to work hard. This is a lesson you need to work hard if, if you want luck to come your way. The golden circle from Simon Sinek, he says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And what you do is simply proves what you believe in. I think you need to find the why. I think we need to find out, we've, we've, we're trying to find the why of our business. And uh, uh, if, you, if you are successful in finding why you are doing what you're doing, I think we'll solve a lot of your problems. I think this is, this is, this is one of the core secrets of uh, uh, success or secrets of not failing. In, in your business. And I think this has really helped us uh, finding our why, why we are doing what we are doing at Safal Nivesh. So uh, I think uh, that's all from my side uh, in far as Safal Nivesh is concerned, as far as learnings from Safal Nivesh is concerned, being low cost, uh, being lean and uh, 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 not uh, really doing anything that is going to kill us, 
having a complete focus on the ultimate reader or the customer um, and uh, believing in luck. I think uh, some of the key learnings uh, that really is health art. So uh, that's all from my